Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, March 15th, 2024. And today is National Kansas Day. It's a day to celebrate anything Kansas. I don't know a whole lot about Kansas, never been there. But I envision I envision a lot of cornfields or some kind of farming fields anyway. And uh, if you ever been there and you can tell me anything different, I'd like to know. So happy Kansas Day if you're from Kansas today. Today in the broadcast, I want us to take a look at at Luke chapter 22. Because as I was preparing, I was thinking about Peter. And, you know, I've mentioned numerous times on these broadcasts that that if I had to choose a disciple that I would consider my favorite, not that we want to do that, but Peter would be the, the disciple I'd pick because I see myself a lot like Peter. Peter was somebody, if you studied him, um, you know, he had a, a faith in God, but a lot of times... A lot of times I think he reacted, he spoke or he reacted without really thinking about the consequences or what the consequences might be. And we see that all throughout the Gospels. And I want to zero in on a, just a couple of, of spots today um, where we can see what happens with Peter. And, um, you know, I hope that you can look and see a little bit of yourself in him. And we'll talk a little bit more that about that here in a minute. But in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 34, this is what, through 34, this is what we read. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. I love that story here. We we see this just before of Jesus' betrayal and arrest. And we're going to look a little bit about that here in a minute. But Jesus has given Peter a warning. And I would love, I don't know about you, but but if the devil was going to tempt me, if the devil was going to try to sift me to see what my faith was made of, like he was wanting to do with Peter, I wouldn't mind if God would tell me that ahead of time so I know it's coming, so I can see it coming. But that's not the way it works for us today. But Peter Peter got a warning. Jesus said, hey, Peter, Satan wants to have you. He wants to, to sift you as wheat. In other words, the devil wants to see what your faith is made of. When we go studying in the Gospels about Peter, we can see many times that he would have been on spiritual highs for things that he had done. We'd see many times we'd see spiritual lows as well. But he was enough of a threat, if you will, that the devil wanted to see what, what his faith was made of. And so Jesus warned him. And then look at what Jesus says here in verse 32. Jesus says, But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Jesus prayed that Peter would stand up to this trial, that he would stand up to this testing by the devil. And Jesus is praying for you today. Jesus is praying for you to stand up to your trials and your temptations. But as we're going to see, as we continue studying about Peter here, we're going to see that, that Jesus' prayer went unanswered in this case. Because Peter's faith did fail. But then Peter was restored, and we'll look at that next week. But then, after he said, teaches him that, or tells him that he's going to pray for him, then Jesus says, and when thou art converted, in other words, what Jesus is saying is your faith is going to fail, but you're going to be converted, but you're going to be forgiven, but you're going to be changed. He says, and when that happens, 
strengthen thy brethren. And I love the way Peter responds here. I, I would like to think that if Jesus gave me a, a warning like he gave Peter here, I would like to think that I would take heed to it. But look at what Peter says. He says, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both in the prison and to death. Peter was pledging his loyalty to Jesus. And in Matthew 26, this story is also told. Maybe not exactly this story, but but one close to it here is told. And, and Peter is responding here in Matthew 26, verse 35. And Peter said unto him, though I should die with thee, Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Peter is acting out. He's saying, I'm ready to go to jail. I'm not going to deny you. I'm going to be right here for you. And they all said the same thing. All the disciples said the same thing. And Jesus again here in verse 34 warns Peter. He says, I tell thee, Peter. And he's giving him a warning here. He says, the cock or the rooster shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. He's even given him a picture of what the setting is going to be. How much plainer and how much simpler is Jesus making it for Peter? Yet Peter still failed. And it's a sad thing. Jesus laid it all on the line. He told him what was going to happen. He told him he was going to get tested. He told him that I'm going to pray for you. And when you fail, strengthen the brethren. But Peter, Peter couldn't comprehend that. Maybe he thought his faith was stronger than it is. You know, how many times do we sit back and we think, oh, there's no greater Sunday school teacher than me. Or, look, I had the biggest Sunday school class in church. Surely I must be something. And how quick we're going to fall. Peter was, was saying, hey, I'm ready to die with you. I'm going to go with you all the way, Jesus. But he couldn't even make it through in the next few hours. And how many times... Do we do something and we get ourselves on a spiritual high, if you will? And we act like we're untouchable, that the devil can't do nothing to us. And it's at those moments when our pride is at our highest that the devil's going to try and, and get in there. That's what happened to Elijah that we studied about earlier in the week and, and a little bit last week. And that's what happens to Peter. Let's go over here to... to the Gospel of John, chapter 18. Because we're going to fast forward this just a little bit. Now the disciples and Jesus are in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was just praying. And here comes Judas. Here comes the temple guard on their way to arrest Jesus in verse number 7 of John 18. And I'm going to read down through verse number 11. Scripture says, Then they asked him again, Whom see, or then he at, let me start that over again. Then asked he them again, Jesus talking to the temple guard now, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me. I ha have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high, the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. Then Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Here we get the picture again of Peter acting out instead of thinking about what's going to happen. Jesus was getting ready to be betrayed. He was getting ready to be offered up as a sacrifice for our sins. Maybe Peter didn't understand that or maybe Peter didn't accept that. But I would highly think that if this events, if these events weren't part of the plan of God, that at any moment God could have sent angels down here to take care of Jesus. I don't think he necessarily needed Peter to get out his sword and cut off somebody's ear. But that's what Jesus did. Or that's what Peter did, rather. That's what Peter did. He cut off the high priest's sermon. He was trying to defend Jesus. 
I don't know what he would do if the rest of the guard would have would have reacted, but that's what he did. And then back here again, let's go back to to Luke twenty two. Jesus gets arrested. He's on his way to the to the temple there where he was going to start his mockery of a trial. And it's picking up in Luke twenty two fifty four, and I'm going to read down through sixty two. Scripture says, Then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Shouldn't the light bulb have gone off right there? I don't know. And after verse 58, and after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of him. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Here's number two. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest, and immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of his Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Here we see the denial of Jesus. After Peter was warned that this was going to happen, the events foretold exactly the way Jesus had talked about. There he was three times. People recognized him. Three times people said, hey, you were with Jesus. And three times Peter said, I don't know who he is. What was the difference? Just just hours ago, Peter was saying, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ready to go to death with you. I'm ready to go to prison with you. Just a few hours ago, Peter was saying, I'm not going to deny you. I'm going to die with you. And now here we are, just a mere few hours after this occurrence. All of a sudden, Peter's on the defensive saying, I don't know who that is over there. Don't you associate me with that guy. I don't know who he is. You see, the reason is public opinion had changed at that moment, by that time. You see, back when Peter was making all these proclamations and all these promises that he could never keep, there wasn't a whole lot of pushback on Jesus. There wasn't a whole lot of persecution, if you will. But, but now that Peter, that Jesus is going through this trial, now that Jesus is going through this, this mockery of a trial and getting ready to be crucified for our sins, all of a sudden people aren't so favorable for Jesus. And now when people are saying, hey, you're with him, Peter, most likely out of fear, was saying, I don't know who he is. Don't associate me with that. Maybe it was fear. Maybe it was embarrassment. You say, that, that couldn't be the Messiah. I must have been wrong. Look at him. Look at him over there. That can't be him. All because the tide of public opinion changed. All of a sudden, Peter denies his faith. All of a sudden, Peter denies his Savior. And how many times do we do that exact thing? We may not go and say, I don't know Jesus. But we deny him each and every time we pass on the latest gossip at work. Or we laugh at that dirty joke. Or maybe we're sitting by ourselves in the bathroom or in in some other part of the house and you're by yourself and you're like, you know, maybe that looking at that porn site might not be so bad. Friends, it only takes a second. We're comfortable in our churches. We worship Jesus in our churches. What happens? What happens? If persecution comes to America, what are we going to do if our faith gets challenged? I know people that that have a goal, and I guess I kind of myself have this goal. Maybe not a goal. I don't know how to put it. But I know there's people that post things on Facebook hoping to go to Facebook jail. Hey, I was persecuted against. That's not persecution. 
But Peter denied Jesus three times, just like Pete Jesus warned him. And then look here at verse number 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. What kind of expression do you think was on the face of Jesus at that moment? Do you think it was one of, ha, 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 Peter, I told you that was going to happen. I told you you were going to do that. Way to go, brother. You fulfilled what I, what I said was going to happen. Do you think that was the face? Or do you think it was one of hurt? Because remember, Jesus said, I've prayed for you, Peter. I prayed that your faith won't fail. I prayed for you. And now Peter denied him. There could have been a tear running down that cheek. Maybe if we all today could see the face of Jesus the way Peter saw it after his denial, maybe that would change the way we live the Christian life today. Peter thought he was something. Peter thought his faith was strong. Peter thought that he had it all under control. And many of us think the same exact thing. Don't be so sure about that. Don't be so sure to think you're untouchable. Don't be so sure. Because the devil's going to come in and he's going to want to sift him like wheat. I'm sure the, the devil wanted to, I'm sure Satan wanted to go and, and test each one of those disciples to see what they were made of, to see what their faith was made of. But Peter failed the test. And I'm afraid many of us are going to fail the test if the devil does that to us too. How can you get that strong faith, that unmovable faith? It comes by getting into the word of God. It comes by studying God's word. It comes by spending time with him and trusting him as you go through your day-to-day -day life. But all too often, the only time our Bibles are open is when we go to church, and even most churches now, mine included, and I'm sure most of them do have a big screen in front of the, 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 the sanctuary now, and for many of us, we don't even open our Bibles anymore. How are we going to stand up to the challenge of the devil if we don't even know the Word of God? Father, I just thank you for this word, Lord, and I just pray that you give us a rock-solid faith so that when the devil comes in and tries to sift us like wheat, that our faith stands strong, that our faith is unmovable, that the devil would be the one to go away, and, and, and the devil would be the one to go out and weep because he messed with the wrong person. Father, I ask your protection and go with us now and bring us back at your next appointed time. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Don't forget, swing by our website, www.scripturelinks.org. Uh, while you're there, you can listen to all the back episodes, all 2000, what are we on, 2085 now? You can listen to them all. Probably take several hours, I would think, but you can listen to all of them anyway, and, um, you can also check out our latest blog posts. You can check out the, uh, you can subscribe to our email newsletter. Like I always say, don't depend on social media to get you this episode. Subscribe to it. You'll know, get right in your email box each and every morning. All right, leave me your comments and also review this web server, this podcast, wherever it is you get your podcast from. That helps more people be able to find uh, these episodes as well. Remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you and then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Son, there's no greater joy than a father helping his boy work on a model airplane. Sure, Dad, but this time, can we use the instructions? Instructions? Nah, we can do this. Because of his love for you, God has provided instructions on the best possible way for you to build your life. Dad, I don't think those pieces go together. Trust me, son, this will fit. Uh, don't worry, landing gear is optional. My airplanes never have landing gear. Living life without our Creator's instructions is accepting less than what He intended. What we need is that battle-damaged look. I just want the model to look like the picture, Dad. Fire up the old welding torch. <laughs>
Mm, that's not right. The Bible encourages us not to lean on our own understanding, but to trust God in all we do. He promises to make our path straight. Now with a few fake bushes and a little dirt, do you know what we have? Another panorama of an airplane crash. Best one I've built so far, don't you think, son? Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. 